Welcome to the Heart of Soul podcast, an exploration of who you are, what you are, and why you are, offering new ways to investigate age-old questions at the heart of you. Hi, it's Joseph, and thanks for listening to the Heart of Soul podcast. Today we continue the meandering yet incisive three-part series on the core reasons our species is confused, covering a lot more than just that. We delve into reincarnation, the concept of soul age, how soul needs differ depending on their phase of development, why religion works for some people and not for others, how personal growth is actually about dead ending, and much more. Enjoy. Okay, let's continue now with our list of three things why the species is confused. Um, the first one we covered in the last episode, that was uh, how we're conditioned to experience things hierarchically rather than holoarchically. And uh, now Stace is going to talk about soul age. Um, I, what, what, I, what I wrote down that you wrote me was, we don't get that different soul ages need different things, which undermines absolute truth and that paradigms present themselves as a one-size-fits-all kind of uh, orientation. Yes. Um, so for this to have any sort of um, uh, um, wheels on the ground um, uh, um, as, uh, applicability to our everyday life, um, what we're going to presuppose here is the reality of um, a reincarnation. Uh, which is a, a whole topic in itself, of course. Um, but for the for the basis for this conversation, Joseph, we can just say that um, uh, in terms of what identity calls soul age, uh, my truth is that um, just my truth uh, is that every one of the seven, a little over seven and a half billion people all fall into a range of how many times they've been on planet Earth, they've incarnated in planet Earth. There are, there are souls coming to Earth for the first time as we speak, uh, from their first lifetime to all the way up to what I, best I can, I can get is about up to 450, 470 lives uh, is the most on the planet in, so in that range, one to 475, let's say, um, lifetimes. Um, without that spread and without the appreciation that a, a seven-year-old needs a certain paradigm of living than a 27-year-old, um, in the same way as you just hinted at um, in the, at the end of the last session, was uh, that um, religions, philosophies, um, psychologies uh, and uh, cultural institutions of all kinds um, all see everyone as a one-size-fits-all. For example, someone who's had over 400 lifetimes here would never buy into religion's picture of things. Hmm. Yet, someone who's on their seventh or eighth lifetime here Religion is an absolutely critical uh, uh, bandwidth of consciousness to learn about because at least it's saying there is something beyond the mortal theater. Um, whatever parameters a religion might, um, might offer uh, that would be seen from a different angle as, well, a fairy tale, um, so seven-year-olds uh, uh, need um, a fairy tales. They need um, dreams. They need structures that, in, that make their heart and soul be inspired. Uh, religion serves uh, um, all soul, souls, many, most souls between their first incarnation and their about about their hundredth. Mm -hmm. About their hundredth, um, they start to. Then, uh, 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 if, you, if you've been, if you come your 101st life, just using this metaphor, if you come your 101st life and you're born into a, um, a Jehovah's Witness family, you'll go, mm, I don't think I agree, I, but I can't tell my parents I don't agree until I move out of the house. Right. And then from there, well, I don't know what I believe in, um, but it's certainly not the Jehovah that was shoved down my throat when I was a kid. Um, so right, right about that, that about 101st, 102nd life, if I'm being pedantic here, uh, uh, um, we start to no longer need the structures of religion. 
So when a person who's, let's say, 250 lives into the planet, um, who might be a physicist, uh, uh, an atheistic uh, empiricist physicist, they're going to look at, at at religion and say, "What a what a ridiculous thing! Look at there's been more mayhem, murder, and duplicity uh, 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 at the hands of religions than any humanistic paradigm has ever produced." Uh, yeah. um, uh, why are they? Why is religion still bu um, buying being bought into by people? Yeah. Yeah. Well, because. There are people in their earlier soul ages here, and they need that. The same reason shoots and ladders keep selling boxes every year. And that's something I wanted to, to sort of highlight and underline here, because I imagine some listeners might be saying, well, you're hierarchicalizing this and making, you know, some souls better than others. And, um, you know, mm -hmm. when I talk about this, I say, well, is a 15 year old better than a seven year old? Like, well, in some ways, yes. Um, you know, in terms of their motor function and their ability to think abstractly. But if you step all the way back, it's not, it, you can't say that one is better than the other. One's just further on the same path of development. So um, that, that's what I hear you saying is there's just appropriateness for the soul age. And we even have also, I want to add, we have this expression, I'm an old soul or he or she is an old soul, which is a really interesting thing that makes it into even atheistic um, mm -hmm. non-spiritual vernacular and yeah. you know uh, it would be interesting to say you know to ask someone when they someone says that like oh well do you subscribe or experience uh subscribe to or experience reincarnation so when you say old soul what do you actually mean because this term gets thrown around and i don't imagine you're asking people to believe uh in reincarnation because we talked no. about that last time but yeah. to to try it on as a possible uh so Thing that could be experienced sure um so let, let me let, let's just backtrack and i think i have a, a little better word structure that might describe the better than thing uh -huh. um a a an older child in a family has no more worth than a yeah. younger child nice okay mm -hmm. um it's got it's more it's more um adept at more sophisticated consciousness domains but in terms of the core worth and value of a being, mm -hmm. being older is no better than being younger. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have this range on the planet, Joseph, because um, we the older souls need younger souls to remind us of this kind of fresh, open air, learning, uh, um, uh, beginner's mind. The same way children uh, do for adults. Exactly right. And, and yet the uh, younger souls need um, the elders to help them sculpt themselves from the inside out to find what their particular purpose path is in any one lifetime. So, and absolutely right, um, uh, just because I remember other lives like uh, most people remember high school, um, I, I would never ask anyone to believe anything. Identity is not, offers do not believe anything that it says just open your mind and your heart and see if it fits for you if identity if what we're talking about in this um, doesn't fit for you it's not because you're wrong and we're right or we're wrong or you're right it just means that it's not digestible right now so there's no beliefs in identity it's it's what's the what's the state in the united states uh, is it missouri the show me state you know? yes um, what, is it missouri missouri is the show me I, state I, yeah uh um got it Show I'm me I'm from Missouri. Yeah, I'm a little disappointed that I that my brain held that particular piece of data. <laughs> and anyway, I had um, a math teacher who used to always say, "Show me I'm from Missouri to show your work." So that's how I go. go. Well, see, I got uh, I, I drew the right interviewer here. <laughs> so it's show everything in identity is um, uh, do not believe anything. Um, uh, and if you if it if you have curiosity. Um, come and ask and we'll go down as far the rabbit hole as you can go and not make you bad because you hit a limit mm -hmm. um, identity is not livable and embodiable <clears throat> to the majority of people on the planet and that's mm -hmm. not hubris that's just that's just a fact um, and not because the people aren't capable of it but younger soul ages simply um, are in their right place and their God is their God. Their picture of things is their picture. 
Will they grow out of it? Um, that's identity's opinion, but that's not our business. It's not our business to move them out of where they are. Um, but back to our original point, one of the reasons why hierarchy um, and holoarchy uh, uh, become uh, mutually exclusive is that one size fits all requires hierarchy. It requires values, value judgments on knowledge. Oh, um, uh-huh. Do you see mm-hmm. um, a, 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 an empiricist physicist, atheist, um, uh, would say that um, uh, people still stuck in the fairy tales of religions have less to offer the world than he or she might. Less worse, um, yeah. What, whether 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 they're conscious of that or not, there's an implied hierarchy of knowledge value. And so this hierarchy is not just structures uh, that we can put our fingers on like buildings or, or, or uh, gradations of military levels. Hierarchies imply value systems, and those value systems can be brutal. Our world right now, it wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that the hidden hierarchical value judgments on different age soul perceptions is responsible for all the conflict in the world. Wow. Value judgments about differing parameters of consciousness maturation. My God, I, I would not, um, I could not value, I, I could value an Amazon indigenous person, um, they're, uh, they're um, a, sh- a shaman, let's say, um, working with ayahuasca, uh, for example, um, with um, a, 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 a soul age appropriate consciousnesses to begin to see that the world is in connected uh, in ways that cannot be parameterized by the mind. Uh, that's great. Um, w- it, however, if, if a physicist uh, uh, gets wind of uh, that some other physicist tried um, an, an, an Amazonic uh, uh, a potion <laughs> and found it changed their life, they might have some interest in figuring out what was going on. That's good, too. Everything is good if it comes out of curiosity. Hmm. And, and things only rot on the vine, uh, overripe on the vine, when that curiosity leads to the death of soul, which is absolutism. My way is the only way, it, and my picture explains everything. Um, but I wouldn't say that identity's picture is my picture. It's the picture of 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 soul development in the divine it's it's just the way it is and you can one day one lifetime um uh, abide with this and 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 see what we're talking about here but if that's not this lifetime um that's fine there's no judgment of of better or worse here so here we knit together the hierarchical holoarchical thing yeah into how the one size fits all is is anathema to the heart and soul of all of us uh, no human being in identities, teachings, assumptions, one of the basic assumptions is no human being is capable of absolute truth. And as soon, including, as, a, go ahead. And, and as, soon as a paradigm teacher or a paradigm owner or a practitioner in a paradigm says this model is for everyone, they've claimed absolute truth, haven't they? Yeah. Yes, they have. Because there's no negotiation in an absolutism. This well, look. It says so in this book here. Um, I, I'm. Just, I don't. I don't feel like I'm capable of absolute. But the word of God is absolute. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. uh, the prophets who were inspired to write that that piece of paper, uh, that 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 volume, they weren't stenographers. Uh, they were impressionists. <laughs> they were impressionists. Yeah. yeah. They spoke an allegory and metaphor, and uh, but the younger souls haven't yet got to the place where metaphor and allegory are substantive enough for them to put their teeth into. They need, they need absolutism. They need uh, uh, stenographers, the, uh, the prophets who wrote the, the Old Testament yeah. and the New Testament. It's like how a, a, a five-year-old can't tell the difference in volume between a short, fat glass of water and a tall, thin glass of water. You can pour them back and forth, and they'll always think the tall glass of water has more water in it. It's just oh. a phase of development. Beautifully, beautiful metaphor, Joseph. That's I never thought of that. That's exactly right. Um, younger souls 
uh, haven't refined their consciousness yet to make those kind of abstractions. Yeah. They only see what's right in front of them. Yeah. So if you're a young soul, you bloody hell need the Quran. You need the Bible. You you need the uh, um, uh, um, uh, Ayurvedic uh, 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 manuals of the of the of the East. We we need those kinds of guidances. So identity may decry and be and have huge sorrow um, about what religionists do to the planet with their absolutism mm -hmm. that's that's a separate issue there's sorrow about that but it cannot be anything other than that than it is so with no judgment there's no when you're holoarchically in touch with everyone's of differing soul ages so no one size fits all there's all the consciousness room for for curiosity for compassion for sorrow, for joy, um, uh, uh, I, I would. Not, we don't try to sell uh, identity at all, uh, or even its earlier version, uh, yeah. uh, as it was in its beta version, which mm -hmm. we'll talk about, I'm sure, at some oh, point. Yeah, we'll soon. get to that. Um, I'm glad we're talking about this because it's um, it's very difficult, uh, you know, as, as as a teacher, also um, as you are, it's very difficult to get this across. Uh, it reminds me of like when parents say to us when we're kids, well, when you're older, you'll understand. Mm -hmm. And there's always this like prickly, painful, like middle finger in that, you know, like you're less than me. Right. And so I imagine it's, uh, I imagine some of our listeners are feeling some of that. Um, yeah. w which is totally understandable, but I just really want to underline that that's not how it's being held because right. the old soul who no longer, for example, needs religion surely went through many lives where they did. Absolutely. It's, as you said, that's it's how they got there. <laughs> yeah, it's a necessary phase of development. Just like in any one life, we do all sorts of stuff, date and marry many people that are not the right people. And you need right. to go through that to get to the next person. Um, so it's it's just I just want to underline how difficult it is to get that across, not from arrogance, but from humility and from compassion. It's like, and again, we come back to a metaphor you alluded to a little while ago. Um, if I'm uh, my first year at university, um, and uh, uh, I visit a, a, a kindergarten. Um, I might be really inspired by all the aliveness of the kids and their unmindful beinghood, you know, they, without a self-reflective eye, yet they're just being what they are and it's coming mm -hmm. out of them. It's, oh, it's so lovely. But, and I could learn, maybe I could learn something from that, that particular day for a part of me, you know. Um, but there's going to be a moment where uh, it's indubitable, it's, it's just un inescapable that um, there's a, a point where I can't learn what I need to learn um, if I'm a first year in university uh, to start sculpting uh, my passion path in life. The kids are not concerned with their passion path. They are their passion path. In that <laughs> that's, that's and beautiful. likewise, you put a kindergartner in my first year um, uh, uh, biology 101 and they're going to be lost. Mm -hmm. So your point is really well taken making these stratifications as inevitable, necessary, and unavoidable doesn't carry with them value judgments of one over the other, just in applicabilities. Which is hierarchical. We're it saying is. that is hierarchical, but worth, we're saying, is, is holoarchical. Worth is, is, is intrinsic, domain specific mm -hmm. in form but not in essence. Ah, uh, yeah, in essence. Yeah, so like the, the founding of the United States was said, and to, to quote it exactly, all men are created equal, it didn't say anything about women. And it's right. saying, it's pointing to the idea that intrinsically, we're all the same level of worth. And politically and socially, we're seeing people are trying to create equalities of outcome, which is a whole other uh, oh. rabbit hole we can go down to try to create. We're all equal in all ways, not just at the level of essence. But that's yes. all. I don't know if we want to go down that road. Exactly. So these two first terms that you brought forward here, why the world's so confused, um, mm. they, they're they're linked in, a, in yeah. this beautiful way. So let we talked about some of the younger. Let, let's let's go into the little older version. Yeah, please. So you move from we move from um, young souls spiritually. Let's just put a spiritual overlay over it, right? That uh, younger souls up to 
the first 50 to 100 lives um, are introduced to religion and um, must go through the necessary tattooing of it on their soul to say yes, yes to this degree, then yes to this degree, then yes to this degree. And remember, until finally, you remember, uh, have to think in terms of audio also. Not everyone's going to be watching video. Can't can't always use hand gestures. Oh, okay. So, Sorry. Large yes. degree. Let's do that yes. one more time. Right. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, 50 to 100 lifetimes in, uh, it's your, at 50, um, uh, I'm saying yes to my religion. And maybe at 70, I'm saying this much yes. Uh, Which is and less. Maybe at 90, I'm about this much yes, until finally at some point, um, uh, that's not for me. Yeah. But you had to go through all of those uh, uh, um, shrinking yeses. Uh, as part of your experience, I, mm -hmm. I had to go through them. I'm a, I'm I'm not a young soul um, uh, uh, on this planet anyway. I would be in another uh, galaxy, perhaps, but not here, which is another nice rabbit hole to go down. Yeah. Um, so so no value judgments. Everyone is worth in their own domain of consciousness space. They have their own parameters of worth, and in God's eye and divine being's eye. Um, this is this is the way it sees everything. And so this is what is amazing about when you drop down to core emotives as the doorway to finally experience the whole oracle divinity. It imparts so much acceptance and compassion. There's there's the earlier iterations of me in my life. I wasn't capable of this kind of compassion hmm. um, for all, all sorts of different reasons. But the deeper you go into spirit, the less judgmental you become. And even in religions, they teach that at the level of the saint, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so let's just say, for for want of a better um, way of really making a big a big um, uh, uh, um, framework, religion is is a, a spiritualized religion of God and heaven and hell and all that stuff. Um, first hundred lifetimes is pretty much uh, taking its course. From a hundred to two hundred and fifty or so, then comes the stage of human humanism. Um, where we are interested in the world around us and don't need to overlay a mystical um, um, acetate uh, uh, over human experience. The value systems and religions are top down. Mm -hmm. The value systems in humanism are bottom up. Mm -hmm. um, human, what, what is meaningful, what is, what is valuable, um, starts as being a human, not by being a disembodied soul somehow. Which would be um, inevitably based on um, and necessary to build on the top-down morals and ethics from religion, which absolutely. I imagine then qualifies the individual to be grown up enough to, you know, have lived thou shalt not kill enough to then yeah. incarnate and not want to do that, but right. and come from their exactly. own beliefs about that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, the top-down beliefs of religion, you must believe this, but one day they become, they're, they're um, incorporated into your consciousness, and they, yeah. then they've served their function. There's nothing yeah. wrong with the Ten Commandments. Well, maybe lust being a sin, uh, that <laughs> I have trouble with. Right? A whole coveting um, thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. It's emotionally repressive. Uh, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right. But, but um, uh, once they're incorporated, as you just so brilliantly um, um, uh, inf inferred here, you don't need them anymore as absolutes. They become part of your lived reality. Yeah. So children now need a whole rules. Curiosity. Children need rules. And then the idea is that teenagers, they don't need rules anymore. Um, right. So they, they can start to embody it. I don't want to kill someone. I don't need someone to tell me not to. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I just want to put a little asterisk to that, that the, the, the only tragedy that bothers me every day is um, the fact that we can grow out of original sin grow out of it how what do you mean um original sin has never been a truth mm -hmm. um and so to graduate if we can say to the next order of, of soulful human development um is humanism is a big broad category you um you lose the um the belief of original sin i am worth I wow. am worth something to learn. And now we, we hearken back here to um, uh, 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 the top-down problem is it keeps, it keeps people stuck when they might be ready to go. 
Yeah. Um, that's the only tragedy that I, that I speak to here. Because, because it's I, presented as this is the paradigm for everyone rather exactly. than this is a paradigm for certain souls at a certain phase of their journey and one day you'll graduate just like exactly. high school or whatever. It's, mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's fine. And In other words, to continue the thought here, you, you, you who somebody, some wonderful writer said, you know, uh, about losing the things of uh, when you're a child, uh, you have to lose the child to become the teenager and the teenager to become the adult. Mm -hmm. um, these are sheddings of old that were only possible because you had to grow up through them, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, um, you literally, um, with just to start a bottom up value system of based in the human, which was which was um, uh, uh, originally sinified, our natural humanity is bad. Mm -hmm. Humanism is based on the new assumption, our natural human humanity is good. And that there is a difference there, and there are lots of people right on that border who, um, who don't know which, which way to go. Well, that's the lifetime they're in, and now that's okay too. And then that typically features a push away from the divine form they believed in that says, no, right. I'm not going to believe in a God. I don't experience that. I need to experience myself. And then so that tends to be associated with atheism and agnosticism, right? That's Ab absolutely. Mm -hmm. I remember, Joseph, I just remembered that somebody a long, long time ago said, when I was talking about God in some early ways, um, div divinity, I said, "Well, what, what would you? What's the first thing you would say to an atheist?" And I, I said, "Well, congratulations. Mm. As a as a divine centered being, I would say congratulations mm -hmm. uh, for lifting yourself out, um, uh, as the saying goes, which isn't really applicable uh, by your bootstraps, which is actually impossible." Um, <laughs> Uh, congratulations on on saying that you're worth something that the story of Eden said you weren't mm -hmm. eating from the tree of knowledge. No, no, that, you had to be obedient in Eden. Mm -hmm. And when Eva, who actually had the cojones to kick Adam's butt in that metaphor to pick the apple, which is just a metaphor for the for self knowledge, um, she gets blamed. But he did the picking. I mean, talk about there's another thing that gets shed in uh, in the old religions is patriarchy. Even the Eastern um, teachings that persist to this day are patriarchal, which is another topic. That's a whole so, other rabbit hole. We'll get to that, I'm sure. All right, let, let, let's complete this soul yeah. soul age thing. We're almost yeah. there. Yeah. So humanism is the is the middle piece. So you could say that the first hundred, hundred and fifty lives are the childhood of our soul arc. 150 to 250 or 300 is the teenage phase. And over 300 or 350 is the grown up stage, the old, the old soul. And this is where it turns back on itself in some sense because the, ult the ultimate value system of humanism is either agnosticism or atheism. Agnosticism says, well, maybe, but I won't know. Um, maybe I should maybe I should be an agnostic just in case there's a God, then God will forgive me for yeah, which is ridiculous, of course. Um, so and then so the middle age is human atheism, by the way, I, I muse a lot. I often kind of uh, laugh or sometimes cry to myself because atheism is in fact a belief system, isn't it? Oh, it's just it's a religion. Yeah, it might it's as well religion. be. It's just a yeah. it's a one it's one step greater in terms of soul consciousness a belief but it's still a belief what absolutely yeah. absolutely it's not an absolute truth it's just a belief mm. i mean look religion itself comes from um uh, the latin of re ligate you re ligate yourself to god reconnect reconnect uh -huh. re ligate a link up right yeah. that's religion atheism is, a re atheism is a religion because but the, the 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 new dynamic is you ligate to yourself uh, yeah, it's so as nice. valuable. It's uh -huh. a religion. It is. Uh -huh. The only time you start to lose religion is after 300, 350 lifetimes, if you've got the good guidance. Um, because it's uh, not belief-based anymore? And that's where we come, what we started of last, uh, last time we talked, mm -hmm. that um, you stop believing in God altogether in your teenage phase because you're too busy growing and learning about yourself. Just like in the body, this is just a metaphor. And shedding the conditioning of the belief-based stuff. Yeah. Exactly. 
then if you're introduced, and you always will be, because always somewhere there's a leading edge of humanity, and you will find it, or it will find you if you're ready to go beyond religion and beyond humanism to their metathesis. Mm. Not their synthesis, but to their metathesis, where there is a divinity, thank you religion, you were right, mm -hmm. but everything that you that you believed around it and made laws around and absolutes around sorry it just doesn't apply in the whole hierarchy it just doesn't so you're cleansed by the by the um, religion of atheism agnosticism empiricism humanism um bottom-up values now you're ready to find out about the real divinity not the one that's put in such poor fo focus by religions um, they've got to believe what they got to believe. That's that's you got to believe something before you can move to not believe. You, it's just there's no value. Again, over and over we say this, Joseph. Right? Mm -hmm. But now, who can help us with the divinity beyond religion? Well, there's lots of paradigms out there that do that. Um, uh, um, ones that to try to put together Eastern and Western um, uh, um, uh, points of view. Many modern spiritual pictures of things. Um, uh, even though Zen Buddhism uh, doesn't evolve technically, it can't evolve <laughs> any more than uh, than uh, a born again Christian can evolve, except through future lifetimes. But Zen Buddhism itself can't evolve without contradicting its central per, uh, uh, premise, which there's no one there to evolve anything. Um, so, uh, what's how can div the divine in the older soul fragment uh, segment of our of our soul arcs? Take the best of both worlds of the religion of, of trying to ligate to God and the religion ligating to yourself. How can we, what, who can lead us there? Which of course requires a holoarchical, holoarchical view because that, that sees God and self as not opposites or separate. Yes, there's a lot of verbiage in modern psycho spiritual yeah. paradigms, waking down, diamond heart, these kinds of things, but they're still hierarchical. There is no articulation of a holoarchal divine structure um, that has any sort of meat on its bones that I've ever found. I, I, I even had to, uh, well, yeah, you know my story that way. So but in modern uh, interpretations of Zen, they tend to favor non-dual over dual uh, right. and, and thereby creating a duality which goes against the paradigm's values in the first place. Well, my, my inner Zen master could have an interesting discussion with you on that. We'll get but to that. I am, I am not going to let him out today. This will be another <laughs> We don't <book>. have time. <laughs> yes. So finally now, mm. who can help us? And unless, unless you, as you said, unless you're ready to explore a holoarchal reality, all modern day psycho-spiritual East-West kind of combinations are going to do is start getting claustrophobic at the top end because they can't break through a higher a background hierarchical framework to consciousness you have to lose the hierarchy to ever gain holoarchy identity simply says and you know this one from years and years uh, of listening um joseph that that uh all identity is is our seeds mm -hmm trying to be planted in the um, soil of human consciousness. There's, we're not having this conversation to get more um, uh, members or to get more people believing this might be a good way. We're just planting seeds so that in the near future, people do have a doorway to a holoarchal grown-up phase of soul where religion can't cut it anymore and strict humanism can't cut it anymore and and east west syntheses can't cut it anymore we need metathesis we need the best of the two previous um segments remolded shed of the, of their distortions and 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 distilled to the what's the essential good about them and that's identity offers that is how to do that and um, to make that leap from middle-aged soul to older soul. Which can only really happen um, from people discovering the limits themselves, not through belief, not through top-down edict. They have to go through their own experience. There's a, um, a phrase that I often use that applies exactly to that, Joseph, that 
We only learn who, what, and why we are by learning who, what, and why we aren't. Yeah. We have to go through the, I don't know who the hell I am, what I am, or why I am. You have to go through that in order to ever get, get oxygen for who yeah. you really are, what you really are, and why you really are. And what so fascinates me about this is like that that's observable and experienceable in any one lifetime. You know, that's what we, when we talk about people hitting bottom, uh, yeah. even if, if it's severe or not, that's, that's how we learn and grow. We learn, it's very easy to see that pain is the greatest teacher, pain, failure, whatever we want to call it. Um, but, but for, for people who've not yet experienced reincarnation to consider that, that that same exact dynamic is just happening over multiple lives. To me, it just yeah. makes intuitive sense. If, sure. Uh, Identity, um, um, how can I say it, um, abstracts what you just said into a, a fairly simple um, framework. That the mode of growth for human consciousness is dead-ending. You have to take anything you believe feels right to you to its dead end yeah. before you can ever break through. You, growth is ba based on dead ends, not new inspirations, dead ends. Mm -hmm. and, but the trick is, how many people are ready to accept they hit a dead end, even tracking themselves that they hit the dead end? That becomes another whole rabbit hole we could go yeah, down. Yeah, the, the, the exact, I think it's worth talking about because the paradox is, I talk about, a lot about this as well when I teach, that the paradox is the younger the consciousness, the more, or younger the soul age, the more difficult it, uh, it is to impart that because um, it's sort of like saying, uh, to a seven-year-old, here, play Connect Four and play it until you're tired of it. Yeah. Like, right. they're not going to want to do that. They, they want this new game to be fun forever, and, and they don't want to get tired of it. Um, oh, but great, if you, great one. Yes. Yeah, but if you say the point of this game is so that you no longer are interested in it, so you can go on to chess, which yes. is infinitely interesting for the mind anyway, yes. that's, that's going to disappoint the child. They want a game that is entertaining forever. Yes, that's exactly right. And so that there are several, sometimes a couple of dozen lifetimes of that changeover. Mm -hmm. And that that's can really be those are the difficult ones. Those are the difficult ones. So let's sum that up. Let's mm -hmm. sum up what we just uh, talked about here. A one size fit all, whether it's philo uh, religious philosophy or humanos humanistic philosophy, and all religions are, philo are philosophies, right? Or humanistic philosophies. Um, uh, uh, the whole one size fits all is a consciousness impedance. Mm -hmm. it, it levels the playing field without any sort of appreciation for growth necessity parameters that are different, just like in different ages, physical ages, they're different in soul ages. And that's not, that's not arrogant. It's just the way it is. The, the physical um, uh, parameters are fractals of the inner world parameters. So the one size fits all without this soul age distinction, when we talk about even soul species, which is a subset of that soul age, without that bigger picture based in dead-endedness and curiosity on the other side of dead-endedness, um, uh, we're stagnating. And we're seeing in the world all around us and all these different political, institutional, medical, societal, all these crushing, um, unsolvable divisions. All that's happening is that we're, we're dead-ending and I, in identity's opinion, we're dead ending with, I think, therefore I am, I have a body, therefore I am, and I have will, therefore I am. We're dead ending. And all these divisions that seem intractable are simply um, on their way to resolution. But they need to see that all of this is a function of a dead end moment in our, in our species uh, development. Mm -hmm. What do you point to as the evidence of that? Like what specifically are the symptoms? Like was it more okay 500 years ago and now it's all sort of coming to a head? Um, no, I would offer if you, if you remember when we were alive 500 <laughs> years ago, um, uh, 
when Galileo and Copernicus and, and, the, and the boys and girls of that time just dared to um, challenge the uh, terracentric view of religion, Mm-hmm. And that all orbits had to be um, perfect circles because that's what God would use, perfect circle, right? right. Um, what they endured, that, that consciousness shift from mysticism to the, through the Renaissance um, uh, that started our industrial age, yeah. um, it was havoc. It was havoc. Uh, the same thing we're talking about, they were talking about, what, was, what are we going to do with the gas, the, ga- the people who light the gas lamps on, 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 on Main Street if uh, we put electricity in? And there were <laughs> right. huge changeovers in that. We're in another changeover. Yeah, phase. what all the people who take care of horses and carriages but, about what they're exactly. all going to be all that job. We're them. We're, mm-hmm. we're leaving them behind. Well, uh-huh. we have the same thing going on here in, uh-huh. the, in, the, in the movement from industrial to information age, mm-hmm. right? Right. So, uh, we're in a, we're in a, 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 right now, we've been in a technological shift over for the next 40 years or so or 50 years but now it's coming it's starting to turn on the inside all this divisiveness um is uh is about moving not just to a new outer configuration but to a new inner configuration the one i think therefore i am in the renaissance moved us in content from a pre-industrial age to an industrial and then an industrial to an informational Mm-hmm. But those are all outer orientations mm-hmm. of institutions and and, um, and 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 the fabric of society. Now we're being challenged to um, to inner an inner havoc going on. And for all those who despair out there, whether the topic the door the not door we knock on is COVID um, or uh, uh, or totalitarianism and or how those two link. Remember in your darkest moments of feeling everything's crazy and not worth it. Um, Remember that the future of the crest of a wave is a trough. Mm. And the future of a trough is a crest. Yeah. So don't despair. Feel what you feel. But look to the positive of how might this leader, this particular leader, Reflect something to me. I, I hate that, that what that leader says. Is there something in there that you share? Maybe that's why you hate them so much. There are sometimes good reasons to uh, want to steer clear of certain war- pictures of reality. But um, use this time to see that we are in a changeover, not just of an external world, but of an internal world. Uh, and that internal world I- identity was I started teaching this stuff 30 years ago, not knowing at that time that there'd ever be a, a, a place to start talking about it. Um, and now, here, here we are. Hmm. And identity is prepared to answer any question to anyone who has curiosity, but nothing we say here is held absolutely. Um, does it pique your curiosity? Let's keep talking. If it doesn't, stick with what you're doing. You need and, to stick with it till it dead ends for and you. take it to not the because, dead end. Yes, right. not because we say so. We may see um, totalitarianism or um, catholicism as dead ends, but they're not dead ends for people who are midstream. Yeah, you see, but but everything is in necessity evolvement, and mm. so let's can we just be gentle with each other? Mm. Um, it'll all work out because um, reality is more than just perception. There is an intrinsic divine reality within which our our lives unfold humanistically, religiously, philosophically. Um, the day is coming where this grown-up phase, that's what what divine being wants us all to begin the grown-up phase. Just begin it. We finish the childhood, there's still 40% of the planet, still our young souls. 30% of the planet is um, uh, uh, somewhere, 40% in, um, in the middle stages. A few are starting to go into older stages, and they're flailing about for what can help me. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe identity has something to say. Maybe not in the whole thing it says, but maybe there's something for you. And that's all Joseph and I are here for at the moment. Um, yeah. Well, my so. wife, Bree, also, who, uh, 
who was part of this whole thing. And so um, I really, I didn't get a chance to thank you at the end of the last uh, segment, Joseph, mm -hmm. um, how wonderful a co-creation this is, especially since we've had falling ins and falling outs ourselves <laughs> yeah. uh, with each other. And we want to be completely patent about that and good reasons we had falling outs, um, mm -hmm. uh, especially from your side. I, I want to thank you so much for giving some space that I think now that the world is so crazy, maybe identity has a sane, quiet voice. It doesn't shout. It invites you to find your answers in the silence and in the stillness with guidance. Mm. You're so welcome. I think that that's a beautiful place to close. And I just want to add one more thing um, that came to me while you were speaking there is the, the heart wrenching difficulty. I'm not a parent um, uh, and I probably won't be, but the heart wrenching difficulty that a parent must have loving a child for who they are and where they are, but also seeing that where they're at, they're going to have to leave. They're going to have to grow out of at the same time. And that's what I hear you saying divine being is doing. It com completely loves where any and all humans are and yes. also has a picture for where they're destined to go. Yes. Uh, and that's a difficult and for a human being. Um, mm -hmm. But I imagine not so difficult for divine being. That's just what it does. It couldn't, it can't help otherwise be what it is. Uh, and I, I hope one of our talks leads us down the rabbit hole of omnipotence omniscience and um omnipresence uh wow. that's a w wonderful little uh, sub sub thing but we've got a third one to go maybe for next time huh yeah we're not going to get to it today so we'll close here and um we'll, we'll f uh, finish next time with the three things why the species is confused thanks for listening and thank you stace i've learned a lot and uh i really appreciate doing this with you all right till next time yeah Thanks for listening to the Heart of Soul podcast. To learn more about Stace Barron and Identity, please visit identity.org. To learn more about Joseph Shapiro, visit clearandopen.com. Until next time, we wish you well on your journey.